Miles Turner extension. One of the most interesting extensions I have seen in the NBA in a while. Yeah. And it's something that if you listen to shows I've done with Danny LaRue, if you listen to Danny, if you listen to my Twitter feed, like the renegotiation and extension is something that we have been calling for, for the Indiana Pacers to do with Miles Turner. So the structure of this, according to Shams, is it's essentially $58 million added on to Miles Turner's contract. He gets $17 million this season in extra salary. This is a possibility that the Pacers could look into and negotiate with Miles Turner because they have so much cap space right now. Other teams like can't just randomly do this. You have to have cap space to be able to do this. Then they added on basically $41 million over the next two years. It's $21 million next season. And then it's $20 million in, I believe, what would that be? 2024, 25, right? Spins. So really, really, really sharp contract structure from the Indiana Pacers. An incredibly obvious one, in my opinion, but we've seen teams not do this before with the renegotiation and extension. I've seen some people ask, why don't the Spurs do this with Jakob Pertl? They have cap space. They have, um, you know, a seeming desire to retain Jakob Pertl. It's because for whatever reason within the CBA, a very stupid law within the CBA, you can only extend people in this function that are on four-year deals as opposed to three-year deals, which is what Jakob Pertl is on. It's a really dumb rule and, uh, th- you know, in my opinion, the Spurs should be able to do this if they want to keep Jakob Pertl. I digress, though. What was your overall impression when you saw the Miles Turner extension announcement, Adam? Uh, I was really thrilled with the cap mechanics. I don't want to call it gymnastics <laughs> because there wasn't much bending that needed to be done by the Pacers in order to make this happen. But I always love seeing really good players get rewarded with a contract extension and know that they're going to be valued in the place where they currently are. And for Miles Turner in particular, he has dealt with a lot of trade rumors over the last several seasons. I mean, I've been reading annually now Caitlin Cooper articles about where is he going to end up? Who's going to trade for Miles Turner? The fit with him and Demonis Sabonis doesn't work really well. And then they cleared out Sabonis. And everyone thought they were going to you know, go in the tanker this year. And it became, uh, who's going to trade for Miles Turner then? Because the Pacers have this large expiring contract and might want to be able to get the best players and best young asset package that they can back in return. And Miles has been a huge professional throughout all of that. He's been so impactful. I'd say the second most important piece to this Pacers team, bar none, with Tyrese Halliburton. He's so good and underrated in a lot of different ways. He's one of three big men in the game right now that has 53s and 75 blocks on the year. It's him, Jaron mm-hmm. Jackson Jr., and Brooke Lopez. And those two guys are front runners for Defensive Player of the Year. Turner is locking down the basket. He's spacing the floor. He does so many good little things through the flow of play. Uh, I just I love the fact that he's been rewarded and can have some of that patience. Now, I know a trade isn't off the table, for, for miles, this extension doesn't mean that he's locked into being in Indiana for a long time, but hopefully it gives him just a little bit more security and belief in what they're building in Indiana. I'd like to see him stick around for the long term because he's a great fit with Hallie. Yeah. So worth noting, Miles Turner is still trade eligible. Like this extension does not stop him from being able to be traded at the deadline. Uh, he, can still be moved. Obviously there is like a functional difference between miles Turner on an expiring contract versus miles Turner now on what is essentially a very team friendly contract moving forward. But, you know, we're talking about this in a team friendly construct. It's worth noting that this is very valuable for miles Turner. I don't really see a world where miles Turner was getting $30 million on the market this off season as good as he is like that money just really wasn't there from any team across the league. If you look at it and I think miles Turner is great. I think he, he probably would have gotten something like 24 
million a year. Maybe would have gotten like a four year, hundred million dollar deal. But because of this extra added $60 million, he's going to be able to hit free agency again at age 29, where basically to make himself whole on what he could have gotten, let's say, it, this offseason, he's only going to have to make $20 million a year in what projects to be a much yeah. more beneficial circumstance in terms of TV money for the players moving forward. Like the way that player salaries are about to skyrocket due to this upcoming TV deal is going to be pretty substantial. So he's going to be able to hit free agency again and probably will end up getting $30 million a year when the cap goes nuts again. So really, really good deal kind of across the board. This is always why I thought that this made sense in terms of an extension. Uh, the mechanics were always there to do this. And again, it, it doesn't stop them from trading him. Like if a team comes over the top and is like, we'll give you a crazy amount of value for Miles Turner now, who's on this incredible contract, can still do it, right? Like a, Here's, here's the other funny thing, right? Let's say that the team really wants to go down the road of the DeAndre Ayton deal that the team tried to do last offseason, right? The Phoenix Suns are a team that could really potentially look at Miles Turner as a shakeup move if they feel like they need a shakeup move. And this actually makes it way easier <laughs> to do a DeAndre yeah. Ayton deal now uh, if that's something that they want to do uh, i don't i don't see that on the cards to be completely sure. honest like i think miles turner is going to stick around in indiana but like if phoenix made it worth their while maybe maybe that's something they would consider i don't know i'm just throwing stuff out there that seems reasonable and logical here's the thing about miles turner here's why i like this for the pacers and why i would keep miles turner it is exceptionally hard to find guys that almost certainly amplify almost anyone else on the court uh, and completely open up your roster flexibility moving forward. Miles Turner for a team that is rebuilding theoretically in Indiana, like they still have some moves that they need to make in order to contend. They should be trying to have as much flexibility as possible, keep their cap sheet as clean as possible in theory. But Turner is an amplifier for good players, in my opinion. He is a top 10 defender in the NBA. We talked about him last week on the Defensive Player of the Year conversation uh, with Mark Schindler. I think I would have him seventh or eighth right now in the Defensive Player of the Year race. Uh, he is a legit 35 to 36% three-point shooter. You kind of have to pay attention to him out there. He's also, since Damanis Sabonis has gone, very clearly improved his ball skills in a pretty tangible way that allows him to be somewhat impactful as a player. I I just really like everything that Miles Turner has done over the course of this last little while to subtly improve his game while also being a player that really helps young players develop and win. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't, doesn't hinder them moving forward. This is a great value contract, still has a ton of trade value. Uh, he's a great partner to have with Tyrese Halliburton. Most importantly, though, is there a team that's looking for, you know, the next star that they can bring in, the next guy, right? He doesn't limit them from a fit perspective at all. Neither does Tyrese Halliburton, right? Like the Knicks have Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson together on that roster. That does kind of limit the flexibility in terms of like, if they wanted to bring in a front court player, they would have to think about the way that that guy fits with Mitchell Robinson or with Julius Randle, right? Because they're both players that take substantial things off of the table while also adding like remarkable things and the additions right. way outweigh the, subtra the subtractions in both cases, but they do take some things off the table. Miles Turner doesn't really take anything off of the table uh, from a team building perspective. You could maybe say like he takes playmaking and passing off of the table, which is why I'm like a little bit, I saw someone in the comments ask maybe about like a John Collins move. Uh, I want to shout him out, Gregory Castillo, uh, while we're doing this on YouTube, shouted out a John Collins potential move. I'd be a little bit worried about like ball movement with that duo together. Sure. Uh, I'm actually going to write about this this week. The team that I think should really chase John Collins is Oklahoma City. 
as a pairing with Chet Holmgren because Chet can really pass at a higher level than Miles and, you know, has that shooting potential in a real way. It, it's a similar kind of fit, but I think it would open up Chet to maybe not get as much wear and tear on his body in addition to, I think it's just a slightly better fit because Chet can play with the ball in his hands just a little bit more than Miles can as a passer and playmaker. That's neither here nor there. But that's really like the only thing that you have to worry about with Miles is like, you want to find a four that is like a comfortable passer and playmaker, I think. Doesn't have to be great at it, just has to be like okay at it, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's really it. And that's why it's so valuable. We, we look at how teams are, are building their rosters now and what maybe the next wave of, of you know roster construction might be. I look to Cleveland and I see where Jared Allen and Evan Mobley have fit in yep. really well as two huge guys who can both protect the rim a little bit and be versatile on defense. Like Miles Turner is going to be much more of the Jared Allen in that situation, but his floor yep. spacing ability on offense could lead a pairing like that to work. So uh, I, I just think Miles is hugely underrated in national circles in the NBA. I always root for players to get the bag and have really good uh, good contract situations and ways that work out well for them. We check both of those boxes here. We're shedding light on a really good player and taking care of him financially with this deal. So I'm, I'm thrilled for Miles. Completely right. I think this is a home run for Indiana yeah. it, across the board, and it's a home run for Miles Turner. It just works out in every way, shape, and form.